Hello, my name is Dr. Hugo. And I am Dr. Maurice Vestica. Today we'll be taking a deep look into the realm of bipolar type 2 disorder. Our patient of interest today is Casey Roberts. <laughs> Casey Roberts is a female high school student in her late teens. After starting at a new high school, her behaviors appear to be normal. However, it is seemingly obvious from early on that she has virtually no social relationships or yearning to have any. Apart from the relationship with her parents, who appear supportive and loving, she only has one other relationship which consumes her, her relationship with her boyfriend Matt. This relationship it was drives many of her actions. Her parents state that there is no past mental health history in either of the families. However, they are in denial of her having an actual mental illness and accredit it to her trying to get back at them for controlling her life. Is there a history? History? What kind of history? Maybe something in the family. Is there any record of psychiatric illness? There could be a clinical condition here. No, 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 no. It's not that. She does this to get back at us. No matter where we take her, it's always the same. This isn't the first time. We told you she's tried this before. She thinks we're trying to control her. This is her way of getting back at us. You know what it's like living with someone like this? Why does she think you're trying to control her? Who knows what goes through her mind? Because we set limits, because we're her parents, I don't know. It's not that simple, Richard. Yes, it is. We've tried everything else. Hospitalize her, see if that helps. Maybe it'll scare some sense into her. I think she's already terrified, Mr. Roberts. I love my daughter. So the real family medical history may not even be reported. No major drug or alcohol use is apparent in Roberts, although casual drinking and nicotine use has been seen throughout, especially while in her depressed episodes. There are no outward health problems visible in Casey. She is an intelligent girl with a strong-willed personality. However, she does not seem to care too much about asserting that intelligence towards any goals. Although Casey is at some points able of living and functioning normally, she has a passive suicidal behavior. As previously stated, she has little to no social relationships. However, Casey does appear to be a fairly friendly person. The largest hindrance on her functioning is her impulsivity. She seems to think that she could do and be able to do whatever she wants when she pleases. She also has a tendency towards thoughts that are very sporadic in nature. Did you, did you ever play Trust Me, you know, when you fall back and someone catches you? Not since grade school. Kids step back, so I never trust them. Yeah. Well, I got a new way to play. Really? You want to play? Uh, how do we play? Casey, come on! <laughs> Casey, no, don't! Trust me, trust me. Go try. Casey, this is... Trust me, okay? Just stay straight, stay straight. Oh, Casey, come on! Delinquent behavior is also presented in her actions in the form of truancy and in the case of her pulling a fire alarm in school just to gain Matt's attention. Sending books over at Elliott Bay. Come on, we gotta go. Who is Carolyn Craig? She's a photographer that I really, really love. 
And anyway, I tried to get your attention, but so I pulled the fire alarm. You pulled the alarm? Yeah. What are you nuts? Yeah. So? Casey, we're in the middle of taking the SATs. What, what the hell are you thinking? Well, she's really, really beautiful, and I want to meet her. She's really, really beautiful? It appears to be a false alarm. Oh. So that means we'll have to reschedule the test. Great. Oh, great, now you can go. No, Casey, I can't. Look at this is important, right? I mean, you're not the center of the universe. Well, sometimes I am. I mean, come on, aren't I? Aren't we? You're Casper and I'm Paula. Pollux. Casper and Pollux. There she is. That's her. She's that little blonde okay. so, right there. I gotta go. I'm fine, then I'll go by myself. Tell her all what is here in my office. Attention. She also has strong thoughts of guilt and states as reprimand for all the wrong things that she has done to Matt, he should leave her relationship. When the onset of her illness becomes to be very apparent to the public, she shows much distractibility and tends not to behave correctly in social situations. Insomnia is also presented along with strange ideas. These ideas could possibly be symptoms of schizophrenia, such as thinking people are always watching her and are out to get her. In fact, there was a time when she believed that she must put cutouts of eyes up in their apartment just to protect them. And that wall, and that wall, and that wall, and that wall, almost done over here. They're for our protection. Take after us. Do some. Helping me. Why aren't you helping me? <laughs> the diagnosis for Casey is bipolar type 2 disorder. To reach that diagnosis, the following must be true. B. Presence or history of at least one hypomanic episode. C. There has never been a manic episode or mixed episode. D. A. Presence or history of one or more major. B. The mood, symptoms, and criteria A and B are not better accounted for by schizoaffective disorder and are not superimposed on by schizophrenia, schizophreniform disorder, delusional disorder, or psychotic disorder not otherwise specified. E. The symptoms can cause clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. Watching the behaviors of Casey would give a person a fairly good look at bipolar type 2 disorder. Most people label someone as bipolar when they are really just having regular mood swings or maybe suffering from cyclothymic disorder. This idea of such rapid switching is not accurate. Although Casey did have her moments of sudden anger or happiness, these moments can be accounted for by simply an experience that she had or something that she said. Simple reactions like this are common. However, her episodes as portrayed were seen as changing over periods of time not in just an instant, giving watchers a pretty good insight into this disorder. 
In an interview, Casey's mother stated that Casey suffered from depression. This may have influenced watchers to disregard her hypomanic symptoms. Overall, Casey's behaviors give a great insight into the life of a person with bipolar type 2. There are several treatments Casey had to endure while being in a patient at our clinic. When Casey first arrived for treatment, a medical workup occurred to make sure the disorder was accurately diagnosed. This would also allow knowledge for a current episode, suicidal thoughts, and hopefully more family history. Casey was probably then prescribed lithium carbonate. Because of the potency of this drug, her dosage would need to be very closely monitored. Therapy would also be very useful for Casey's treatment. Cognitive behavioral therapy would be a good start to help her deal with her emotions and stress. Therapy would also help Casey to fully understand bipolar type 2 disorder and to know in the future when an episode may happen. Likewise, education would be essential for her parents, helping them understand what exactly is happening with Casey and to recognize her episodes would be very, very beneficial. There are many people, like Casey Robert, who suffer from bipolar disorder. It is beneficial for others, not just immediate families of those suffering from the disorder, to know the signs and symptoms in order to provide proper care.